Hi, I'm Barbara Seelig Brown. Welcome to Stress Free Cooking. Tom Beyer and I love to cook together, so we've taken a trip to the farmer's market. We have all this beautiful produce. Right. We have some inspiration. So on this show, we're going to make some dishes for you using our produce. But before we do that, we want to make our stress-free cooking seasoning blend. And the reason we do this is so that we have a shortcut. This is kind of an all-purpose seasoning blend. You can use it for chicken, for fish, for pasta sauce, anything that you want. So let's do that, Tom. Okay. So we're gonna mix together some salt. So into this bowl, we're gonna mix together some celery seed, onion powder, garlic powder, dried rosemary. And when we use dried herbs, we like to rub them between our fingers so that the oil from our fingers help release the fragrance of the herbs. It'll also break up the rosemary, which is not a bad thing either. So a little bit of that basil. So we have basil, and now we're gonna add some oregano. Same thing, we wanna rub it between our fingers. Okay, and I can smell that the smell herbs are already oil. releasing their fragrance, right? It doesn't yeah, yeah. take much. No, it doesn't. It's and that's small. dried parsley. And this is equal portions of each of these ingredients. And then this one is freshly ground black pepper, so we don't have to rub that between our fingers. We're just gonna mix this up. Okay. Thank you. We're just gonna mix that up. We have a whisk. And we're gonna use maybe a teaspoon of this in our souffle that we're gonna make, which we serve a lot to overnight guests for brunch, right? Yes, we do, we do. So They all like it for breakfast, it's good. It's good, and what's really good about it is it's a do-ahead dish. So I could make this or assemble this, or even Tom, maybe. I'll let you do that sometimes when we have overnight right. guests. We'll assemble it the day before, refrigerate it, and then the morning of our brunch or whatever we're having, we take it out of the refrigerator and pop it in a cold oven. If I'm using a ceramic dish, I wanna put the ceramic dish in a cold oven so that since it's refrigerated, it doesn't crack in a hot oven. So the dish and the oven will come up to temperature at the same time and we don't run the risk of breaking our dish. If you're using a metal dish, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's get started. And what vegetables would you like in here, Tom? Well, We'll start with the pepper. Okay, so we have a bell pepper, lots of color. We like to cook with color, right? Yes, we do. Okay, and we're cutting the pepper as if it were square. We're cutting four sides off the pepper. And then we'll take out whatever seeds we can. Little baby pepper, pepper. in there. Yep. Okay, take out whatever seeds we can. We'll cut it into strips. Let's clean this up just right. a little. I'm going to use this pepper to do that, actually. Right. Okay. We'll cut it into strips, and then Tom will dice it into little pieces that will work well in our breakfast casserole. So while he's cutting a pepper, I'm going to start by sautéing some pancetta, which is Italian bacon that is not smoked. It has very little fat, but it'll give us nice flavor in this dish. So we'll move that over there because it's a little easier. And I'm gonna grab a spatula. Okay. So while this is starting to cook, Tom's cutting up the pepper. Everything's gonna go in here and we're gonna saute the vegetables. We also do this after we've roasted vegetables and we have leftover roasted vegetables. This is a great way to use up roasted vegetables that are left over. Yes, it is, yeah. And a lot of people love that. They love the veggie, the veggie and the eggs combination. Yep. Well, we use roasted vegetables in a lot of ways, yeah. um, but they're really great to have. So I hope you've seen our show on roasted vegetables. We're also going to add some of these mozzarella pearls to this, but not to the saute pan. We'll add it to the casserole dish when everything is assembled. 
in the bottom of my casserole dish, I'm gonna put some breadcrumbs. You want to use, basically use some stale bread. And the liquid from the eggs is going to soften those breadcrumbs. And you almost don't even notice that they're in your breakfast souffle or breakfast casserole. Right. Okay, those can you go right in these? here. Okay. Sure. Thank you. And it looks to me like you want to put an onion in there. Yes. That'll be great. Onions and peppers are a great combination. I love the color of these peppers, this orange and yellow. It's great to have lots of colors in your cooking because since we eat with our eyes, it really makes things look more interesting, don't you think? It's beautiful. I love the colors. So if, if there's any tears today, it's because I left my ski goggles. Uh, they're not here with me today. So if anybody's seen an earlier episode where I uh, cut onions with ski goggles, yeah, you may see tears today. <laughs> Well, we don't need a lot of onion, right. so I would say one quarter of that onion, okay. but we're going to cut it in half, right? That's right, yes. So that since it's round, it doesn't roll away from us. Right. And then we'll make some horizontal yes. and some vertical cuts, and then we just slice away. Brave Brothers is a family-run business producing award-winning mozzarella and many other farmstead cheeses. Their mozzarella and marinated mozzarella are fresh and light and their mascarpone is velvety smooth. They also produce cheddar cheese curds which are great for snacking. Their cheese is green energy produced and made from fresh, high quality milk from their own dairy farm. You can find their cheeses at www.cravecheese.com and many other national retailers. We're sure you'll enjoy these cheeses as much as we do. Good. Now a good guideline when you're cutting is to try and give yourself as much room as you can on the cutting board. So you do want to remove the waste from whatever you cut previously. So we're just going to give these a rough saute. And since pancetta really has very little fat in this, I feel like I need to add just a little tiny bit of olive oil to help cook those vegetables. And olive oil is heart healthy, so we're not worried about using extra virgin olive oil in our cooking. So while this is cooking, Tom, I'm gonna take that cutting board okay. out of your way. And I think we wanna go on, and we're gonna scramble those eggs. Go ahead, that's good. Okay, got that, get that out of the way. So we have six eggs, and we have a bowl to put our shells in, and this is for the eggs oh. once they're cracked. And we want to crack our eggs on a flat surface, never on the side of the bowl, because that'll push shell into the egg. That's right. Okay. So six eggs, and then we're going to use about a half to three quarters cup of skim milk just to help loosen this up a little bit. It'll bake a little bit nicer. One thing I do when I make an omelet sometimes is use one whole egg and several egg whites per person so that we have few less egg yolks right. in that omelet. And this is coming along nicely. Then we'll whisk those eggs together with our milk. How much of this milk? You can use it all. Uh -oh. 
Great. Because we, we pre-measure. And that's one of the helpful tips I think that's really important is before you start cooking to always have everything either assembled or measured, pre-measured, so that when you start cooking, everything goes together really quickly, quickly. and you don't have to worry about whether you've measured the right amount right. or whether we've put any something in the dish, like if the doorbell rings and you have to step away to answer the door or the phone rings and you decide you need to answer the phone, you don't come back to your cooking and say, did I add that? Right. Alrighty, so that looks good. Actually, you know what? Let me give you this bigger whisk. Yeah, this is, Make it a little easier. That was from our spice blend. Right. Perfect. So now we want to add some of our spice blend. So I'm going to add a couple pinches. A pinch is about a quarter of a teaspoon. So I really want to season this well. So I have about now have about a teaspoon of our spice blend in those eggs. Our veggies are almost done. I'm just gonna give these another couple minutes. In the meantime, Tom, you can add those eggs to the breadcrumbs so they start to soften up those breadcrumbs. And we'll push those down a little bit with our whisk. When you actually go to serve this, you'll barely notice the breadcrumbs in this mixture. It really just helps it bake and come together nicely. Okay. That looks great. Okay. Let's add our veggies, but first I want to cool these for just a second so that they don't start to cook the eggs before I put it in the oven. So in the meantime, let's take those off the heat and I'm going to grab another cutting board so we can slice a tomato. Okay, so Tom, I think we can add our plum tomatoes. Okay. So grab a couple of those and we'll thinly slice them. And we're using a serrated knife. Okay, great job. So that serrated knife really helps. It does. Okay, so now that my vegetables have had a minute or so to cool, mm. I'm gonna add them to the breakfast souffle. We'll stir that up a bit. So it's evenly distributed. These tomatoes look very nice. They do look great. Plum tomatoes are great for cooking because they have a thicker wall but a thinner skin. Okay. And I'm gonna add my mozzarella. So these little pearls are great, and they're already cut up for us. So they'll melt nicely into the egg. And these mozzarella pearls are our favorite. They're from Crave Brothers Cheese. Okay, that looks perfect. Now we can top it with those tomatoes. Perfect. And then just a tiny bit of salt and pepper over that. And this is ready to go into the oven. And as we said, you could make this a day before, refrigerate it, <clears throat> take it out of the refrigerator the morning you want to serve it, and put it into a cold oven so that the dish doesn't crack. We're going to be back in a minute. We're going to clean up and we'll go on to the next recipe. While the first recipe is in the oven, our breakfast souffle is cooking nicely. We're gonna get started on our second recipe of this day, which is a sauteed chicken breast with garlic, white wine, and fresh asparagus. So Tom is gonna to work on the garlic. So you take the side of your chef's knife and you crush it, and the peel comes right off. We've done this many times, but it's a good trick to know. Mm -hmm. And then you just give it a nice rough chop. So I have some extra virgin olive oil in my saute pan, getting ready for the garlic. And then after we get this in our pan, we're gonna move on to preparing our chicken breast, our boneless, skinless chicken breast. 
and the garlic will cook nicely and it'll also start to break up a little bit when we add the white wine. Okay, that looks wonderful. Is that enough? Yeah, perfect. So we'll throw that in here. Okay, we don't want to overdo the garlic. Some people tend to put way too much garlic in things. We find that in Italy they use less garlic than we do here in America. That's true. All right, so let's um, swap this out for a clean board. Okay, and we're gonna work on our chicken. Okay. So, Tom, if you could hand me that chicken, that would be awesome. Thank you. So we have some boneless, skinless chicken breast. Again, this is one of those nice things that you can keep in your freezer because they defrost very quickly. If you need them in an instant, you just put, some, put them in some warm water and they'll start to defrost very quickly. So I'm just looking these over to see if there's anything I need to trim away. And these are pretty clean. Um, sometimes I buy chicken breast on sale and it really isn't trimmed well, which I understand since I've bought it on sale and that's okay. So oh, sorry. that's okay. I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper Actually, can you pick that up and put that there? Which? This whole cutting board, right on the stove. Thank you. So I have a piece of parchment paper, and I'm gonna put my chicken breast in the center of my parchment paper, top it with another sheet, and we'll take this flat meat pounder. In Italian, they call this batta carne. It means to hit the meat. Some of them have spikes in them. I don't like the one with the spikes in it because it puts holes in my chicken breast. And for this particular dish, I really don't want my chicken breast to have holes in it. It won't stay as juicy. So you start in the center of the chicken breast. So you can't see it, but you can feel it. And just start pounding. And all you really want here is even thickness, okay? So that looks good. And I'll do the second one. We can also do this in a plastic bag. So if you prefer to do it in a large plastic bag, that works just as well. We use a lot of parchment paper in our kitchen and um, it's just our preferred way of doing it. We can also get rid of this knife. Thank you. And I need to just wipe my hands so I have a nice soapy dish towel back here. Okay, I'm gonna season my flour before I dredge my chicken. I'm gonna season it with our stress-free cooking blend, so a couple pinches of that. And this is Wonder Flour. It's very light, it's very granular, and the reason I like Wondra is that it doesn't, when I dip my chicken in here, my chicken doesn't get as much flour on it because this is a lot lighter, and also this Wondra absorbs a lot less oil. So we'll just dip our chicken in here. And then of course we're gonna discard this extra wonder flour because it's had the raw chicken in it. Chicken. Okay, so chicken cooks on side one and if you can see this is the smooth side of my chicken. So this is what I call my presentation side. So I put my presentation side in the pan first and since this has all been in contact with raw chicken, we'll get rid of this. Okay. Cake Bread Cellars was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cake Bread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. Cake Bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast, you can visit the winery or watch for Cake Bread events in your area. With an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The Cake Breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families.
Now that our chicken is in the saute pan, we're going to talk about asparagus. So the way we trim our asparagus, first of all, this has been washed and dried because I don't want the ends to be soggy. So you take your asparagus, you hold it in your hand, and wherever it breaks is it the breaks. right place. Okay? Yep. So if you want to do that, Tom, I'm going to check on the chicken. Maybe we're going to turn this over. Almost. It needs. I like it nice and golden brown, which brings up a really good point about reading recipes. When you're reading a recipe and it says cook four to five minutes or until golden brown, you're really more concerned about the golden brown than you are about the time. Because all of our equipment is different, our stoves are different, whether, is, is this gas, is it electric? Right. What kind of pan am I using, right? Non-stick pans tend not to get as hot as traditional pans. So four to five minutes is just a guideline. All right, we're gonna turn this over. And once we get our chicken turned over, looks good. It looks nice and golden brown. Nice and golden. So I don't know how long that took, but it is golden brown. Now we can add our asparagus to the top. And we're gonna take, could you give me a splash of that white wine? Okay, so we need a, a, a healthy dose of white wine, thanks. A healthy dose of white wine in here. That's gonna create our sauce. And I'm gonna put a lid on it. So now the chicken's gonna finish to cook and the asparagus will steam a little bit. So Tom, it looks like our chicken and asparagus is just about done. I will check the breakfast casserole. Okay. That should be done. Ooh, looks good. It looks great. I think it looks particularly nice because of how artistically you put the tomatoes, put the tomatoes on, on there. On there. Those are beautiful. <laughs> So we have to let this set for just a couple of minutes. So while that's setting, why don't we talk about the wine you've selected? Okay. We're gonna use a Wente Chardonnay. This is the same wine you cooked with. Right, we right. always want to cook with a wine that we would drink. Right. And so since we've used that wine in this dish, I know that that wine will complement the dish very nicely and when you're cooking, I don't want you to think about using cheap wine. Think about whatever wine is good enough for you to drink. So that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be inexpensive wine, because whatever is in the wine bottle is now going to be in the pot. So you want to make sure that you cook with a wine that you would really enjoy drinking. And that could be whatever you like. It doesn't mean it has to be a certain price point or a certain producer. It just means that it has to be a wine that you enjoy. And people get hung up on wine pairing and it, wine pairing is fun to learn what wine goes with what dishes, but it still always comes down to what do you enjoy drinking? Right. So let's take a taste of this. It looks pretty in the glass. It it's a great nice. color. It smells great. Mm, wonderful. It's perfect with this because it has some tropical flavors in it. Good choice. It's very nice. Okay, let's take a piece of our chicken. So we'll start with our chicken and some of the asparagus. And then what I also like to do with this is give it a sprinkle, sprinkle of Parmigiano of Reggiano. So a sprinkle of a nice high quality cheese over the asparagus and the chicken. And the heat of the asparagus will melt the cheese and it'll bring things together. Okay. okay. So we're gonna take a taste of that in just a second. In the meantime, let's get a little corner of our breakfast casserole and it will cool off a little more while we're tasting the chicken and the first piece is always the hardest to get out just like when we make brownies or anything else so you can see how fluffy this breakfast casserole becomes from the eggs and the milk okay. and I'll cut the chicken and give us each a taste 
Looks nice and Looks juicy, doesn't it? Yeah, so this dish went together really quickly. There's no need to overcook the chicken. But since we're cooking it in liquid, it's less likely that that's gonna happen anyway. So I'll give you a taste. I'll let you do the honors. Very moist, terrific. Can you taste the garlic? Mm-hmm. Good. Delicious. Okay, let's try the breakfast casserole. I'll give this one a taste. Okay. Perfect. It's really light, and it's especially light because we added the milk to this. So, Tom, thank you so much for all your help today on stress-free cooking. Thank you for instructing me. We really appreciate your watching us today on Stress-Free Cooking. You can find these recipes on my website, stressfreecooking.com. You can visit us on Facebook at Stress Free Cooking with host Barbara Selig Brown. You can find us on Instagram at Stress Free Cook. We wish you health, happiness, and many, many delicious dishes. Sellers was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cakebread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. Cake bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast. You can visit the winery or watch for cake bread events in your area. With an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The cake breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families.